Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back for the finale to my three-round mock series around the NFL per division with the NFC South. We've been every single division apart from this one. It's been actually quite fun. Um, I didn't really – it just – this idea came off the top of my head when I wanted to do a three-round mock, but it took too long. And, I mean, it's turned out far more fun than I ever expected. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Drop a like, comment, subscribe. I'm getting better by the minute – or by the minute – by the day. Um, you know, I've been on YouTube for just over a month. So, just continue to work and to perfect my craft – perfect my craft – as you can see, um, and just continue to work to get better, getting a mic soon, uh, already have premium on this, so getting to understand how to do draft, like trades and stuff, and understand football more, so stick with me, guys, this is going to be fun, uh, I can't wait for even more videos every single day, 12.30 p.m., we're going to have something new, so without further ado, let's kick it off, so hopefully the RNG does not screw up this entire draft which sometimes it does. It did it on one of them. So hopefully we see things go correctly. And hey, let's go. Awesome. So things have not been screwed up. And this is probably the most straightforward pick of the entire draft. Justin Fields out of Ohio State. Um, if it's number four, Teddy didn't work. You know, um, Teddy's going to be an amazing backup. I know 22 million a year. Ugh. But uh, you, when you have a supreme talent like Justin Fields here, and if he is number two still in the uh, in the league at this point, I think that it's just a no-brainer. You never pass up on a franchise quarterback here. So Justin Fields. See if anything interesting happens. Um, so far, nothing too out of the ordinary. Walker Little usually doesn't go there. But, ooh, that leaves a very interesting amount of players on the board because Micah Parsons should not be here. That's really awkward. But we got to deal with it, okay? So here I could easily see Trev. I mean, Travis Etienne, like, he's a stud, but I don't know if he's worth, like, a top 15 pick. Like, he's worth it. But in the modern NFL, does it mean that much to an organization? That's the real question here. Um, they already addressed this issue with Marlon Davidson. Um, they don't really need linebackers at all. But, I mean, Mike Parsons is damn good. They do kind of still need a tight end. I know they have Hayden Hurst, but – Oh, uh, uh, this is a really awkward pick, guys. Um, if you guys want to drop a comment saying who you would pick here, let me know. Because, honestly, like, according to their knees, they go ETN. But, like, we've seen the Falcons get riddled with injuries so many times, and you can never have too many uh, defensive players, to be honest, with how often these guys go down. So I'm pretty sure I want to go Micah Parsons here. But – I mean, Wyatt Davis could definitely be his pick. And I think it's the better pick. You know, you get the need, and um, if we take a quarterback in the later round, <clears throat> uh, then I think that would just be kind of like a match made in heaven, protect, like, because the, their line is kind of shitty. Even though they spent a lot of first-round draft capital a couple years ago, they just threw it the wrong way. Uh, I'm going Trey Smith here, actually. Trey Smith is way higher on my board than Wyatt Davis is, so. Uh, we're sticking to Trey Smith, really solid talent out of Tennessee, uh, extremely underrated on this board, but really, like, we'll bring in somebody, and uh, you need that, that that future to be protected. And even if not, like, you still want your protection. Oh, Trey Lance to the Steelers, that, is, that would be interesting. Uh, Steelers, my team. But, uh, yeah, it would, like, if you want to bring in the future or if you want to keep Matt Ryan, why not protect him? Like, they're either a large capital investment or else they're a large draft capital investment. Regardless, we got to protect them. So, uh, got to analyze what's on the board. Hey, I just took Jalen Waddle there in my last one. Uh, let's see who's on the board here. You still got ETN, which I think would be kind of a solid pick here. Doesn't say they have a need for it, but that's screw their needs. Um, I mean, you could always go a quarterback to bring up under Tom Brady. That might be the smart move, but it's not the move we're going to make today, okay? Travis Etienne shouldn't be here. Uh, we're going to bring the future in, Jamie Newman. Uh, I took him in my last draft with the Lions in the second round. But when you have a supreme talent like Tom Brady, 
who signed a two-year contract, fully guaranteed, so he could probably move on if he wanted to, just ring chase, move on, or retire. Uh, why not just let the last year have uh, a stud quarterback sit underneath him and actually learn how to run the NFL from the best quarterback who's ever played? Not the, like, the greatest quarterback ever played. So Jamie Newman, going to make a kind of a bold move here. And now we're sitting at 29 with uh, the Saints. And, uh, I mean, I, I really hate this. Every single draft I do, these guys fall. And, I mean, justifiably so. So um, let's continue with this draft. And excuse the dogs in the background if you can hear them. But I mean, someone probably came onto their turf and they're like, uh-uh, hell no. Nah. So, let's let's analyze what we got here. I mean, wide receiver, I don't really think they need it. I'm pretty sure they just got Emmanuel Sanders, and they have Michael Thomas, and they have Traquan Smith. I don't think a first-round wide receiver is something that they need. They're obviously planning for the future when they got a center um, in Cesar Ruiz this year. And if they're at this point, like, they just – they can't make it to the Super Bowl. It's like you can't – at some point, you just got to say, Drew is going to call it a career. And honestly, he might call it here. But there's not enough quarterbacks on the board for me to feel comfortable taking a QB in the first. Um, so what we got to do, we got to fill in – we got to fill in where, uh, wherever they suck. So we just kind of like nowhere. This, is, this team was built very well. And, I mean, I guess you can say their biggest need is wide receiver. Like, Linebacker, they have that covered, and there's no real linebackers at this spot that are worth it. Edge, they got that covered. D-line, they got that pretty much covered, you know? Um, yeah, line, yeah, linebacker is not really a need. Uh, cornerback, they're, they're all right. I mean, they have Marshawn Lattimore, who's great, but um, don't really know who their number two is. But here it's, you know, yeah, I don't – I think a corner is a bigger need, and we're going to reach here a little bit. Reach. He's my number 30 guy on my board. Elijah Molden. Stud corner out of Washington. I think in the future he's going to be a little bit higher up boards. But um, really solid talent. I think that would fit both a need and a value pick. So, um, all right, let's get out of this cornerback thing. Come on, TDM, what can you Thank you, thank you. Okay, now this is an interesting place because Nick Bolton is somebody I would love to put on this team. But actually, I'm going to go Alex Leatherwood. Um, you may say, like, they don't need a tackle. But Alex Leatherwood was one of the best guards in college when he played there. And that means he just has versatility. If you need him at tackle, put him at tackle. If you don't, don't. You know, like, really amazing talent here in the draft. Um, and you have your stud guard slash tackle for the future. And you have your franchise quarterback. I don't think that people are going to be complaining here. Um, going on to number 43. Let's look at the Falcons. Who's still on the board? Chuba's here. When in doubt. I mean, I know they have Todd, but... We know that Todd can't handle that much of a load. They don't have uh, they don't have really anybody that I remember besides Edo Smith. So when in doubt, take an amazing talent here in Chuba Hubbard. Um, he's falling. It's a good steal. Why not get a great talent in the second? Chuba to the Falcons. Oh, I didn't take a quarterback, did I? <laughs> well, we'll see who like we'll see what happens. I'm not gonna. Uh, copy and paste my pick from the third round from like last draft, but we'll see what happens. Um, okay, Bucks. Let's see who's around. Uh, Max Borgie might be the move here. I'm going to be honest, and here is why. Uh, it doesn't say that running backs needed, but Keyshawn Vaughn to me is not the vibe. Uh, I don't think he's going to be working that well, and Max Borgie is so good. So good. Uh, really, really amazing talent, and I mean, we got to look at the other options here. I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown's good. Chris Olave, solid. Terrence Marshall, okay. Tamori and Terry, great. Um, I just don't really see anybody who can match the value of Max Borgie. Where is he on my board? Oh, let's see. Where's Borgie? 53? I mean, 59. I mean, it's still a value pick for what I have here. And... I think that's something that could really complement Tom Brady in his last year. It's something you can check down to, um, kind of like a Danny Woodhead, interesting enough. Uh, so let's go Max Borgie here. He, Tom likes his pass-catching backs that are super elusive. And I don't really think anybody in the running back room right now, Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans, is good enough 
to outclass Max Borghi by a long shot. So that is why. But we are with the Saints here, and we can go a couple of ways here. We can go quarterback, which I think we might go. We, we very well might go quarterback. Um because I don't think Drew's going to last very much longer, and I don't think they're getting any closer to the damn Super Bowl. So even if he does stay, you might as well bring the talent in in a second. So I'm looking at KJ Costello, and he has those games where he really reaches high, and some games where he's just low, low, low. He's a little bit too inconsistent for me. Um, and I hope for the best for him. But I'm going to do what I did last draft. I'm taking Tanner Morgan here. Really solid talent out of Minnesota. You can call it a reach. He's my number 21 guy in the draft. Um, that's obviously subject to change. I got to watch him this year. But amazing talent. I really think that guy is something special. Um, let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, okay. So here's the problem with this draft. Actually, you know what? We don't even have to address that. Chaz Surratt is here. In literally every draft I ever do, I take Chaz Surratt. But there's a reason. He is so good. Um, thank you to Mel Kuyper for pointing that out to me. So good. So, I mean, there's no real need to think twice here. Get a guy who is a real talent and stick him right in. So, we're back with the Falcons. And the time has come for the future. Hey, who took KJ Costello? Interesting. Okay. Interesting. I wasn't going to take KJ Costello here. But um, the guy I'm thinking of is Desmond Ritter here. Derek King could be a sneaky move. Bring him back to the Mike Vick type days. That could be something special. And I love watching Derek King. Only player really on this list that I've actually had the time to really spend some time watching in person. Um, and he is so mesmerizing. But it's not – the system that they have right now doesn't really fit uh, exactly what Derek King needs. But let's, let's check out the running back that we got earlier. I just got to make sure Chuba – um, I mean, Chuba works in its type of offense in Oklahoma State that doesn't really vibe with D.R. King. And it's much more of a Desmond Ritter type thing. I like Desmond Ritter. Like, let's see where we have these guys on my board. We don't even have Desmond Ritter as a top. I, I love Brady White. So, you know, Desmond Ritter might be the more fit here. But let's bring him back to the Mike Vick days, guys. Come on. Let's go. D.R. King is such a great player. Um. It's also a fun pick just to like, think, oh, what would happen if Derek King went there, you know? So, great pick. I think that would be a great idea. Also, I love how the Steelers draft is falling out. So, I mean, that would be fun to see. So, we are at the Buccaneers' final pick of the draft. And there's a lot of ways we can go. I am not going to go to Maury and Terry like I've done every single draft. I mean, I have just a couple of my guys in the draft. Um, Jalen Mayfield too. I mean, like that's just because I see like good value with these guys at the specified position. But, excuse me, but Chris Olave is such a great talent. Um, pops off on tape, like extremely fast, great route running, good hands. Uh, let's take him. Let's add to Brady's arsenal and uh, Jamie Newman's future team, and just create insane wide receiver core. Chris Olave. And that is the end of the draft and the end of this series. Obviously, it will come back after, after the season's gone or maybe halfway through. We can do like a halfway three round each division so we can see what's up and then just like mark the changes as time goes on. But regardless, let's just do what we've done every single time. Let's recap how the draft went. For the Panthers, you have your starting quarterback, starting tackle slash guard, and then you have a starting linebacker to fill in for Luke Keekley. I think that this draft fell perfectly, perfectly for the Panthers, and I, I, would, I would not sweat it at all. I would think that this team could be competing in the next couple of years easy if this is how the draft falls. Um, Falcons, you get your starting guard. You get, um, you get your starting running back. And then you get your new future at the quarterback position in D.R. King. Really interesting draft. Oh, I forgot to grade uh, the draft for the Panthers. I would grade it a, I would grade it an A, minus, just because um, the Leatherwood pick isn't too flashy. It's a great pick, but 
not something that's like a super value pick. But Justin Fields, we all know that um, that's where he should – that's the latest he should go. Then Chaz Surratt, very solid value for the pick. But, I mean, A- minus that's still solid. That's a really good draft pick. Um, coming back to the Falcons, um, I said all that. Uh, I would give them – I'd give them uh, a B. You know, you get a solid lineman. You get a steal at running back, but running back doesn't have enough value in the NFL. And then you get a very solid quarterback that could very well be your future, if not just an amazing backup. So um, that's also the time where you take shots like that. So I'm giving them a B plus now, just because I, t- I talked myself into the B plus. Um, Buccaneers got your future quarterback. You got your, uh, your running back to take off pressure of both the future and the current quarterback at the time. And then you just completely just pushed your wide receiver to core above everybody's. So I'm going to give this one an A- minus as well because you got your future at the quarterback position. Again, running back doesn't mean too much, but it's a good value there. And then Chris Olave isn't the flashiest pick in the world, but it just it, it really helps. So that is, unfortunately, the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And please hit that like button, comment your thoughts down below. Please subscribe. It's only going to get better, and there's content every single day. So thank you guys so much, and I'll see you on the far side. Peace.